So in this editing tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create some beautiful woodland light rays, just like this. Let's get started. So this is our beginning image. You can see we've got the light coming from behind the tree and there are a few rays there, which is absolutely beautiful, but I want to enhance that a little bit further. So this tutorial is going to be great if you've got similar images, if you've been out photographing and uh, maybe in the winter or the autumn time when the sun's that little bit lower and you're getting these dramatic rays peeking through the branches of a tree. Always I find the best thing to do is duplicate the layer that I'm working on just so I've always got a fail safe that I can go back to the original really really quickly or I can do a quick comparison to see uh, how much I've changed and whether this is kind of process has been worth it has been advantageous for the image ultimately. So let's start off by doing that we go to layer and duplicate layer so we've got a new background layer so we've got a copy there. Now what we need to do is basically isolate the highlights from our image. So that's all the bright areas, everything that's up coming from the sun and maybe within these rays. So to do that, all we're going to go and do is choose from the select panel up at the top here, color range. Now that color range gives us an option of lots of different types of color channels that we can choose, um, as well as the highlights, midtones and shadows, but it's only the highlights that we're interested in at the minute. So we've got that selected there. Now it's a case of adjusting things like the range. Now the range is how wide is spread and how much of the image is being included within that highlight area. So we can adjust it just really depending upon the image itself. But what we're looking to try and do is isolate just the brightest parts of the image. So that obviously in this instance is going to be the sky, um, the sun itself, and then a few of the highlights that are falling onto the uh, the leaves of the tree as well. Now with the fuzziness, I tend to try and kind of keep that fairly low. Again, that's just a more slightly more finite adjustment. You can see from the black and white preview that we've got down in the bottom here, everything that's black that's is not going to be selected, and everything that white, everything that's white is going to be selected. So bear that in mind, and you can just effectively tweak the ranges and the fuzziness just to really get the most precise selection that's necessary. Uh, with your selection preview, if it's not set already, if it's normally just set to none then just set it to uh, matte black and it just gives you a slightly more clear indication of what we're actually looking at here. But I'm quite happy, maybe a little bit less there on the range, quite happy with the selection that I've got. So that now has selected everything that's within that kind of zebra area that you can see. Now what we want to do again is isolate that area. So what we can do is that we can right click on this area if we've got the marquee tool selected, even though we're actually not going to be using the marquee, if you press that marquee tool on the vertical toolbar, right click and go layer via copy. So that's now made a separate selection of our highlights and we'll actually just call them highlights in the layers panel. Now what we need to do is to make this highlights layer um, a smart object so we can edit the effects that we're going to apply next, we can always go back to it uh, so it's a non-destructive form of editing. So to make it a smart object, make sure our highlight layer is selected and we'll just go up to filter and convert for smart filter. So it's as simple as that now. We're going to go back to the same panel, I'm going to go to filter and we're going to come down to blur and now we're going to choose a radial blur. So the radial blur, there is a couple of options in terms of how it blurs, whether it's a spin, and um, that's effectively, obviously, as you can see in the preview window there, um, a radial spin or a zoom effect. So we're going to go with a zoom effect. You can choose three different levels of quality between draft, good and best, and um, depending upon how fast your computer is that you're using um, Photoshop on, um, I'd say kind of stick to best to begin with. It can take longer to render if you're using the, the best the best quality setting. Good is pretty good, um, but it obviously doesn't take as long and draft is that little bit poorer, but it's great for older laptops and computers. Um, so yeah, actually, I think I'm going to stick to good for the minute here. Now, what we can actually do in our little preview window here is move our icon around. And what we're actually doing is trying to tell Photoshop the direction and the position of our light given the frame. So if your sun was directly in the middle of the frame and everything was coming right at you, um, you'd obviously probably want to keep it in the center. But the way it is, our light rays are coming down at a more of an angle. Um, so this is always kind of a best guess. And this is why we were using this highlights layer um, as a smart filter so we can go back and change it if it's not perfect because it's not going to give us a, a preview as we do it. So 
it's kind of a bit of a best guess scenario. So I reckon we want to end up with our sun somewhere in this top right hand corner. We can increase the amount um, of this radial blur, we can lower it, so it just really depends on how strong you want of the effect. So let's keep it there at about 84 and we'll let Photoshop render it. So it's not done a bad job, it's not perfect because it didn't really get the sun kind of ex uh, the, the, the rays exactly where the sun is. Um, so we can go back and redo that if you wanted to. So to go back and change what we've been doing in terms of the settings for that radial blur, just double click on the smart filter layer just where it says radial blur and now we can move it again so we know we're not a million miles off we probably act, this is like the center of the blur here we maybe need to move it up a little bit and slightly to the left so I'm going to do that about there let's give it another go Ooh, we're really really close again so one more time I think we need to go up ever so slightly so this is what I saying why it's really really important to have a non-destructive form of editing and doing this ever so slightly close again I just need to go a little bit to the right. There we go. So we're pretty much bang on. So our, our sun there becomes the center of our blur, which then is going to make all the rays afterwards look that little bit more genuine uh, and consistent in terms of the path of the light. So we've got that set there. Now you can, this is an optional part, I suppose, of this tutorial. If you want to really make these uh, light rays stand out that bit further, what's probably a good idea is to duplicate this layer. So we can do that either by pressing Control or Command and J, or simply clicking on your Highlights layer and going to Layer and Duplicate. So obviously the more you duplicate, as you can see, the effect gets brighter and bolder. You can do one more if you want. It may be a little bit too much. I don't know, let's have a look. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit too much, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. So what will be easier now, because we want to actually edit these layers. So because they're all separated, let's actually bring them closer together. And if we select Top Layer, and the bottom layer, obviously select all the highlights layers that you've got if you make more than two copies. If you right click and then press convert to smart object, it will just merge them down into one editable layer. So that's what we need to work with now. Now what we're going to look at now is actually adding some more blur to our radial blur because obviously as the sun as the light travels further away from the sun it won't be as intense and it won't be as sharp. So whereas we've got some areas down on the image here which are quite striking and quite bold. We want them to lose a little bit of that strength as it gets further away from the source. So to make it look very, very natural in terms of the actual spread of the light. So to do that, we're, with our highlights layer selected, we're gonna to go to filter. I'm gonna come down to blur gallery, not blur, but blur gallery this time. I'm choosing field blur. So field blur allows us to put individual points onto an image uh, and within that area, so, to define basically how much blur is within it. So you get the option of putting a basically a drawing pin in the image and then this little circle here you can intensify the blur or you can soften it. So I'm going to keep one there just for a moment but the one important one I want to put on is right in the middle of the sun. So if we reduce as much blur as we can in the middle there and same again around the tree. So you can put in as many as you need and effectively, as the sun starts to, as the light, sorry, starts to move away from the sun, you can just add a bit more of a blur. So you can do this in whichever pattern or manner that you feel that is necessary for your image. But I think it's good to kind of work in little arcs, as you can see here. So I've got one row and then I've got a second row there, a third row. So as we get further and further away from the sun, the light becomes that little bit more softer and a bit more blurred. Once you're happy with how many uh, little points you've put in, if you wanted to actually do this uh, part of the tutorial or not, just press OK. And as you can see, it's looking really cool, but it is quite full on. This is not naturally how light would look um, in terms of the strength and especially how it renders through the rest of the image. It blurs some parts of it, but that's absolutely fine because all we need to do is change the, um, the blending mode of the layer that we're working on it on this highlights layer. So we're going to go to a different blending mode and change it from normal to screen. So screen is going to amplify the highlights and try and reduce a little bit more of the effect of the shadows and the darker areas. So where we were before, it gave us a little bit more detail in the sky, but screen really amplifies that, makes that sun nice, bright and bold. Now we can still reduce that effect again. It's not a problem. We can either reduce the fill or 
can just reduce the opacity. So it still gives us that effect overall. So if we had our opacity set to around about 65, 66, and even if we click on and off this layer that we've been creating, you can see from where we were to begin with how much of an effect it's actually had. So it really does kind of help amplify the effect overall. If you want to soften the edges of our blur a little bit more, you can also add a layer mask. And simply with a black brush, we can just go in a little bit closer on a really soft setting and just erase or mask out the edges of the light, depending upon where it falls in your image and how intense you want it to be. So we can just be a little bit more refined with the overall effect. But that is the concept of creating these beautiful woodland light rays. So hopefully you've enjoyed this little tutorial. If you have, keep looking out for iPhotography for more. Thanks for watching.